Praise the Lord, dear friends. Thomas Manton IV here. Just wanted to uh, come on and bring you a few affirmations. I've been in conferences the last two weeks, uh, back to back. It's been really, really, really um, quite a time. And the Lord just touched me to come on and just say a few things to you. Not a teaching, not a message, but just some affirmations for you. Number one, you will be successful. Number two, you will hear God in the current instructions he wants to give you, what he wants to say to you, what he wants you to be doing now. Number three, God will help you to achieve what he wants you to achieve in this season. Number four, he'll give you the help that you need. Of the Lord is here. Number five, you're going to get very creative. Your imagination is going to begin to erupt with new creative thought, new creative brilliance of God, new things that you just never thought of before. Um, number six is going to be a time of recollection of other brilliant thoughts God's already given you and you're going to begin to see his his uh, mind in giving you recollection of things he's already spoken to you that you've not embarked upon things that went dormant things that you didn't do that you could have done number seven the Lord's going to give you the deliverance from the spirit of fear, all fear, all self-doubt, all self-agonizing, all self-despair, and uh, beating yourself up over things that even were inflicted upon you. Well, you didn't do that. You weren't the one that did that. So why would uh, why would you? have pain and suffering and agony over something that was done to you. Sometimes, you know, we allow the effects of things that happen in the realms of regret and we begin to think over and over. And a prophetic word was given to me through a major uh, apostle, prophetic voice, se several in the last many days, but um, one in particular, he said, the, the enemy's trying to have you replay in your mind what uh, what could have been, what could have been done differently, you know, what should have been, what what wasn't done, what you know, blah 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 blah. And I thought, yeah, you know. And he said, God's going to make things so clear to you. And he said, the hand of the Lord is upon you to bless you and to give you things that you. You know, we'll be amazed to see happen. And the hand of the Lord is moving anew and afresh in this season. Things are going to become very clear. I want to say that's the number eight. That's the number eight. That's the number for you. Things are going to be very clear. God's going to make things very clear. Number nine. I said it before, but I'm just saying this in number. You're going to... You're going to get loose from the spirit of regret. Number 10, God's going to make you like Manasseh. The name Manasseh in the Bible was, the Lord made me to forget my trouble. You need to have a, a memory eraser from the Holy Ghost. Number 11, a memory eraser, bad memory eraser. Number 12, Isaiah 43. Two, you walk through the fire, you didn't get burned. 18, remember not the former things, consider not the things of old, because I'm going to do a new thing. Shall it not spring forth, verse 19. I'm going to do a new thing. Now, verse 20, Isaiah 43, verse 20, I'm going to cause um, rivers to run even in dry places. Fresh anointing, you're right. He's here. He is here. He 
The other day I was right where I am right now on the road. I came back from the airport and a big, huge alligator, like one of those 10, 12 foot ones, you know, stopped right here. I could just point to it right here where I'm at, right here. And decided to lay down and the Lord had me speak to him. Say, get up, boy. Get moving. Don't sit in the road. He, he was walking. I think he got, maybe got disoriented from being out of his environment. And he, he got tired for a minute and laid down. And a bunch of uh, uh, official vehicles came to kind of lead him along the way. And, uh, and I spoke to him and he heard me and he turned his head toward me and, and said, uh, like, wow, you know, like he responded to my voice. Imagine, not because of the sound, but because of the authority of God in my voice. And his claw began to move, his big fat hands, you know, and he stood up on his feet tall and began to walk to the side and go back into his place over there where, where there's water and a bunch of grass and trees and whatnot. I thought, this is amazing. He, 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 he just listened to me and, and went. That's a point for you. You have authority to speak to everything. Number 12, that's a good apostolic number, a good kingdom foundation number. 12 or 13, wherever we are. You, you have the ability to speak, so speak. Speak to things. Speak and say what you want. Number 14, 13 or 14, wherever we are. Prophesy. That's 1 Corinthians 14. 13 talks about love. 1 Corinthians 13. First Corinthians 14 talk about the prophetic offices, so that's very appropriate in number. Begin to prophesy. Begin to speak the things. Mark 11:23. Speak to the mountain; it'll be moved. Mark 11:24. What things you pray for, desiring, you're going to have them. Number 15, which is. Is it verse 15 there, whatever. 23, Mark 11, 23, 24, 25. Yeah, it's 25. 25th verse, forgive. Forgive everybody. Just forgive. Forgive and trust the Lord to help you forget. You have to forgive. You, you, someone says, well, you don't know what they did to me. Yeah, I know, because I've had things done to me that are beyond human comprehension. They're so evil. And the Lord says again, yeah, I feel the power of God here. Release the fire upon my friend right now. There it is, there it is, there it is. You're going to feel the tangible touch right now. I see people beginning to get touched, broken, weeping, deliverance from intimidation and fear and despair and depression, denial, you know? Things you need to just embrace and say that happened. Let me process this thing in my mind and get through it and get it out of me. And, I, and forgive everybody. Forgive everybody. Forgive everybody. Oh, it seems so hard. You say, you don't know what they did to me, man of God. I know. I do know. Maybe something different to you than me, but horrific things. People that you just can't imagine. They could be, a human could be so evil. But what are you going to do? Be stuck there? Are you going to let the, ha the hatred of another... Are you going to let hatred toward them rent space in your mind and, and live in you? Or are you going to get bigger than them and it and the devil and get over it? The strong one gets back up and keeps moving. Got knocked. You got hit. You got hit. You got shot at. You got hit. Oh, yes. It happened. But now you can rise above it. Be bigger than them. Better than them. Don't be like them. Don't want to repay evil for evil, though I know in your mind you've gone through it. I heard a man of God say he wanted to, <laughs> he had fantasies of taking a bulldozer and driving through some evil pastor's churches, you know, knocking it down, and he really enjoyed the thought. He says, I wasn't going to do it, but, you know, some people, even in the kingdom, even in the church, even in the religious world, they act just so stupid. Some people say they're Christians, and they're really not. Some people are, say they're bishops and they're just sons of Belial, man. They're not even clo anywhere close to God, the things that they do. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's reality. That, it happens in this world that we live in. What are you going to do? You have to rise above it and be better than all of that. 
gotcha, gotcha, I feel the anointing. All right. Number 16, begin to embrace new things. Number 17, embrace new friends. Number 18, embrace new networks. Number 19, embrace new opportunities. Number 20, believe God for him to begin to open up new doors for you that'll just be astoundingly amazing. And God is good at doing that. I received a prophetic word on yesterday from major apostles, been to 88 countries. Phenomenal, phenomenal, well-known man of God. Brilliant and used of God mightily in the realms of the miraculous. Healing and deliverance for people around the world. Multitudes uncountable and untold. And told and untold. And he said to me, the next 30 days, he said, it's going to be like amazing. God is lifting you and opening so many new things and said it's going to be beyond imagination. Higher dimensions of things, open doors that are just beyond imagination, you know, beyond, beyond. And uh, man, I received that. It's the right time. It's the right everything. It's the right. He says, you're ready. You're ready. You're ready for that next volume, that next chapter, that next thing. And uh, the Lord is doing it. Look at that. See it, but it's a guy standing there in the horizon with his hands lifted up to God, the glory, the red sky all around. It's like that. Number 21, God's going to give you new expertise from people that are experts and skilled in areas of what you need help in. Number 22, God's going to afford to you equipment that you need. Number 23 is going to give you property, the, the space to use, offices, real estate, house, whatever you need, car, things you need. Well, those are, those are like four different things, so let me make those number points. 22, 23, 24, 25. Property, like office, house, cars, yeah. But I, I really feel the creative flow here uh, of the anointing saying that there's coming new expertise from people the things that you need to produce for the advancing of the kingdom things that you need to produce your messages and materials and insights and revelations and the gift and talent calling that God's given you my bro check it hey a power of God's flowing here receive the touch of the creative glory coming up the glory of the touch of the Holy Ghost coming upon you to give you connections with new people that can help you achieve and succeed in what God has granted to you. I want to say something in, order, in the order of that. The success is really up to you. Not so much up to others. It's what you do with what comes to you. But things do have to come to you to work with. And I hear the Lord saying he's going to begin to give the help in, in more ways than you thought. In more ways than you imagined. In more ways than you thought would happen. God's about to do it, my friend. God has people. He has technical systems. He has ways of doing things. He has brilliance and expertise and things, ways that can, of things that can be done to help catapult you years ahead of where you've been to where you're going even in seconds, minutes, and hours and days instead of years. You know? <laughs> hey, Lord, I tell you. Now listen to this. The Lord says, say there's not this long time for the harvest because the harvest is ripe now. I'm going to stop saying numbers because I'm already in the mid-20s to go into 30 points here. But this will be typed and this will be numbered by my, my, my staff and team. But, you know, the Lord... I mean, it's free flow here. The Lord is saying... I'm going to make this in number points to give this as, as declarations for you to declare because they're all from heaven to have you produce and have success, you know. But the Lord says... 
don't say it's like four months of the harvest. The Lord says it's ripe now. And I hear this principle of time. The Lord says the time is now. When God says something, he means it. It's up to you to grab it, take it by force, and make things happen with what he said. If he spoke it and he inspired things to be said to you, he creatively said things to you, he prophetically said things to you, then that's what he wants. That's his will. That's what has to happen. And the Lord says, now my son, now my daughter, watch me. Watch me begin to help you and catapult you and thrust you out to the places where you've been ordained to be because I've already spoken it. And now the Lord says is the day and the time and the hour when that's really going to happen. But the time is now. Do not wait. The Lord says, do not wait. Do not wait. For I am doing things even now, even as we speak here right now, things are happening in the world of the spirit, in the realms of God to make things happen. But you have to get your faith up. You have to work in the gift of faith. You have to believe God for this, the unknown, the unseen yet, the supernatural uh, for things to begin to happen and take place. And the Lord says, this is going to happen now. You're going to see my son, my precious son, my precious daughter. You're going to begin to see me moving and getting things done quickly now. Next point, I hear this, the spirit of acceleration. Next point, the spirit of excellence. I want things done in excellence. And the Lord says, the next point, I'm giving you prosperity. Even in opulence, you're going to live. Even in elegance and opulence and great things, great decor, great colors, beautiful surroundings, beautiful houses, beautiful offices, beautiful vehicles, beautiful clothing, beautiful adornments. The Lord says, oh yes, I've given this to you for your pleasure and also people that see you, they get pleasure. Even last night I was in a, 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 a great meeting and pastors were saying, you know, I've watched you from afar and I didn't know I'd meet you. I wanted to tell you the way you dress your clothes, like they speak, they shine. I mean, my custom suits, they, the people just look and they're observing and they're getting blessed. Now, it's for their also enjoyment. It's also for their enjoyment that they're marveling at something. And they come and say that to me. So it wasn't just for me to have it to feel good, but for other people's enjoyment. What are colors for? What are colors for? What are beautiful clothes for? I, I marvel at people that dress, dress like, uh, like skunky, skunks, you know, like a skunk. Skunk, at least God made a white stripe on the black thing. But they don't smell too good, right? People just dress any old way. Yeah. And they don't know how to dress up. There's a principle that still works. Dress for success. You have to present yourself well. And just because you're in a hot climate, it's kind of hot to wear suits and all that, doesn't mean you shouldn't try to get a light one or something elegant. Doesn't mean you don't need to wear a good watch or a nice ring or nice shoes. I had a man of God who's a great psalmist, known around the world, was, was ministering in the conference. And those of you that were there, you know who I'm talking about. His initials are uh, ES, you know who I'm talking about. He came up to me like five times, he says, I love your shoes. Your shoes, look at this. Hey, I'm like, yeah, I just got two new pairs of these last week. I, in fact, I saw one, they fit me so well, I bought another pair. Now I gotta have two of this. Beautiful suede, Italian with black lines in them. Very, very elegant. And they can work with any suit and they're so comfortable. <laughs> the people are coming up to me saying that. It's great. Honestly, it's great. And I'm for that. I don't care, you know, how people like to dress down or dress trashy. I, I was listening to a, a multi-billionaire. Last night, late last night, I stumbled upon this multi-billionaire. And he's a wild man. He's just crazy. The way he talks, oh my God, he's just downright, wow. I'll leave some blanks in the, you know, I'm not filling the blanks of wild man. And he was saying, people, the way you dress, and he said a few kind of rude things, you know. How do you expect to present yourself? Success has something to do with look. All right? I don't know what number I'm on now, but here, here we go. 
listen to the scripture. Man looks on the outer appearance, but the Lord says, I look on the heart. And some years ago I was praying and I said, you know, Lord, you know people how they how they're having problems. You know their heart. You know my heart. You know all, all the heart. And, you know, and I was kind of talking to the Lord about a few things there in that way. People that are in situations and they don't know how to get out of them. I said, the Lord says, I look on, I, he says, I look on the heart, yes, but I said that man looks on the outer appearance. And the Lord said to me, like shouted it, like he said it loud, authoritatively, authoritatively. He said, he said, I said that man looks on the outer appearance. Didn't I say that? I said, yes, sir. You said it. Yes, Lord. He said, then you have to make provision for that. So here's the homework assignment for success for you. Start to get yourself. My God, I feel the anointing. Ishkaba, babroshte keta, eto hosha ya palasa tagare. Woo, glory! Sunlight is going. I'm going to do a part two on this. I don't want to be talking from the dark here. I'm heading, I'm heading into a place right now. I got to go. But I'll pick up on this. My God, the Spirit of the Lord is moving. My friend, get into packaging yourself. Dress yourself up. Now, you know, it's, it's about the anointing and it's about the power of God. It's about all that. That's the main thing. You have to have that. So all the natural stuff doesn't uh, replace the supernatural. Don't ever think that. But you know, you must be organized. You must present yourself well. You must be believable. I heard a multi-millionaire. Uh, uh, he's estimated to be worth more than half a half a billion dollars. Um, and he and he said the number one thing that I say causes success is influence. People to believe you, to believe your message, to receive you. Influence, and that has a lot to do with how you present things. Listen to me, listen to God's prophet here. How you present things, it means a lot. You want influence, and you also want to be connected with the influencers. Because when you get connected in fa the favor of God, connected and honored and you know connected with and working worked with someone of influence now, who they influence, you also now influence. You've entered into a, an entirely new arena and um, new audiences, and you want that. You don't want to stay in the same place you've been. You want to move to the place where God's taking you next. Say amen. Life is not to be boring or lived in, in just one stage. You have to grow from glory to glory to glory. I feel the presence of the Lord so strong here. I don't know what to say. But I'm going to leave you with this. Replay this. Share this. And thank you for being my partner. You can do that on thomasmanton.com. And there's a donate button there. You can connect. And also you can send me your prayer request here by private inbox message on this uh, Facebook thing here. Sow into this anointing. You'll reap a harvest from it. I keep sowing, and that's why I keep reaping. Even I, I sowed again yesterday. I just had to keep doing it. Sowing, sowing, sowing. What? Into what? Into great anointing. Not everywhere. Not everybody. But when I see somebody great, like I was with this apostle, been to 88 countries, shaking the world, I had to sow into that grace. And I'm, I'm reaping from that anointing. And the honor that I had to have private time to fellowship with him and his wife. Wonderful. And I see someone that's anointed. I want to sow into it. Some apostles I was with last week who were becoming very dear to my heart and me to theirs, I know. We had a great, great time. I had to sow something there. I had to do that. I had to, I had to give a seed, you know. And great, great anointing where you see God. That's where you want to, that's where you want to connect. So, the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. I feel so caught up in the glory here, and I'm enjoying this so much, but I do have to go. My previous schedule, but I'm going to come back again 
keep flowing in this, but do share this. Uh, move this around. Let other people partake of this. This grace, this glory, and tap the grace. Tap it. Tap it. Catch it. And the Lord loves you, and He wants you to be encouraged, and He wants you to know that you are His own chosen vessel. You're His own son. You're His own daughter. You're the apple of His eye, and you're going to begin to see His grace. In his favor, you're going to begin to see it. You're going to begin to see it, my friends. Receive the presence of the Lord and the touch of heaven. I am Thomas Manton the Fourth. And I'm praying for you. And every word that's of utterance from heaven that's come out of these lips, I from this voice here, I pray that it, it absolutely manifests in your life with glorious power, creative power, miraculous power, and that it happens now. Get out of the mundane, get out of the rigmarole, rigor mortis, and stiffness. After someone's dead, they, their thing freezes up. Some people are living that while yet alive. That's where the word rigmarole comes from. Really from rigor mortis, but it means you're stuck. And God says, I don't want you to be stuck. No. People are saying, hi, prophet. Hi to you too, my new friend there. I, I will get, we'll get acquainted. Spread this message. Let it, let it take course where it's, where it's to go. And our, our audience is really way too limited, way too low. We're going to be reaching so many more, even millions of people around the world because that's what the Lord has ordained. And I want to see you succeed. I'm here to help you. So God bless you, my friend. Isaiah 48, 17 says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and leads you in the way you should go. God has wealth for you. He has success for you. He has the best, most beautiful, most enjoyable life for you. And all this is coming into fruition as you break through into the next phase and the next season. Dr. Angel, God bless you. I'm going off the air now, but replay this and I will see you on the next broadcast. All of you that have come on, Bishop Donald, bless you, my dear friend. I just sent you a message that I recorded for you yesterday. I hope you're hearing that. And all the other friends that have been on, God bless you. I love you. Talk to you soon. Brother Dennis in O-Town and all of my other friends, Tiffany in Dallas, God bless you. Let me just look at a few people here. Sheila, God bless you in Miami, Florida. Hey, I'll be back to Miami. Dr. Timothy J. Walker, great servant of the Lord. Love you, man. Christina, also from Dallas. Remos from Kenya. Hey, man, thanks for sending your phone number out. We'll get in touch. Maureen, God bless you, dear. Brother Nixon, hey, my friend. See you soon, my friend. God bless all of you. Maxine, God bless you, dear. Yes. Brother Frank, Helen. Helen Maria up in the Northwest. I know you. Dear old friend. From some years ago. Trust you well. My dear brother Frank, you're a great man. Thank you for all you're doing. All right, the Lord bless you. Others that will be coming on the replay. Let this keep spinning. God is doing something fresh and new. And I declare your new season is here. I declare things of old are getting wrapped up and being thrown off. Things that have wrapped themselves around you that kept you bound and stuck are being broken. <laughs> oh God, I feel the anointing. Release that deliverance upon my friend. Don't settle for less, settle for the best. Strive for the best and get busy. Trust God to do what he can do and he's gonna do many things. I declare that he's going to liberate you. The spirit of the Lord is the key all of that where he is there's liberty i declare it over your life right now in jesus name 
Next season is here. It's not coming. It's here. Next season is not coming. It's already here. And the time is now for you to rise up, my friend, and get on with the program that heaven has for you. Why you were born, why you're here, must be made tangibly manifested. The fruit-producing factory that you are, your life, that your life is, your life counts. John 15, 16, the Lord said, I want you to bear fruit and I want that fruit to remain. He said, have love one toward another, then people will know you're the disciples. But also, uh, he wants you to make disciples. He wants you to make disciples. Not just in one place, but all around the world. So get busy about the Father's business. You in business, rise up and prosper in your business. I declare it's happening. You in ministry, I declare that God is just untangling you and getting you out to where you need to be. Because the world has need of you, especially if you have something good, you know. Some people, I'll just say this, it might sound a little bit curt, you know, a little bit brash. Or, but some people, I don't know, I don't think they have enough. I, I just observed that. People, are either, either they're not made or not, they're not, they're, they haven't deliver, deliver, developed their <laughs> developed develop their skill yet enough or the power of God is just not strong, strongly so much upon them and you, it's just kind of hard to flow with that you know but when someone's really got a good thing a great anointing a great gifting great treasure in the earthen vessel the power of the Holy Ghost working through them brilliance and you know my God that thing needs to go to the whole world and I also pray one of the other points is God's protection is upon you and the Lord's healing is upon you and his power is upon you to strengthen you, preserve you, connect you to where you need to be connected, but to protect you from all evil in this world. No evil shall befall you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, says the Lord. He said it. And I declare it in Jesus' name. You'll dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Psalm 91. And dwell under the shadow and abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And no evil shall be able to harm you. No people rise against you. They'll, they'll all fall for your sake. Anyone that takes counsel against the Lord and His own anointed, you and me, they'll fall. They'll crash and burn. They'll be trashed, they'll be crushed, they'll become as rubbish, they'll become as dust on the ground, they'll become as nothing. That is our declaration. And listen here, about talk about success and revenge and forgiveness and thing, of bad things that have happened to put that all into one little bag and shake it up. Let me say, the position of heaven is that those that have done you wrong, they've sown a bad seed, a horrible seed. And now, the whirlwind of destruction, the harvest that they've sowed for is coming back to them. And that is a reality. So you want to be very careful how you do things. Ephesians 6, 8 says, Do good unto others, and the Lord will do good to you. The good that you do for another, the Lord will do back for you. But I want to say it works inversely also. Adversely, inversely. When you do bad to another, bad is also coming back to you. And the Lord's principle is that it will happen. So always live to be a blessing. God knows who are his. And when you really work to do the right thing. Thank you, Frank, for putting all those on. Keep doing it. The uh, And everybody, I have a new DVD set and a book. Let me see if I can find this. Oh, I'm glad I'm remembering this. You're reminding me of it. Actually, I didn't remember myself. That's why we need people to be helping us. The Benefits of Excellence, a wonderful book. This is powerful. This is powerful. The Benefits of Excellence. Yes. And I also have a DVD. Let me see if I can find it. That goes with it. Yes, The Power to Create Wealth. The Power to Create. It's reflecting there. Okay. The Power to Create Wealth. There it is power to create wealth 
This is rich stuff, and I, I'm telling you, the, the content in there will absolutely change your life, and I'm not just saying that. You know, just because there's a book and a DVD doesn't mean it's the bomb. It doesn't mean it's the greatest thing. But these, right here, and, we, and I have a two uh, product special together right now. If you get these, I can mail it in the United States and Canada. If uh, Just add $5 for shipping and handling, but they're normally like $30 or so value, but I've both for $20. And if you can add $5 for shipping and handling, fine. If not, just get it. I'll send it to you anyway. But try to be a blessing and add $5 for the shipping and handling if you can. For $20, both of these, the book, life-changing, about excellence, wonderful. And the scriptures about excellence from the from the Bible, I've went through to find them and put them in here also, as, long, as well as 40 diamond keys for your success that God, the Holy Ghost gave me from a live message we did and the power to create wealth. This right here is... It's life and it's life altering, life enhancing. Because God does want you to have wealth and treasure. And that is also my prayer for you. So all of these things we're talking about too also leads to results and producing new things. And the treasure of heaven, the treasures of God are in the earth for you, my friend. And he wants you to. Boy, my hair is like growing like a tree, yeah? A tree planted by the rivers of Lebanon, or the Jordan, or wherever. <laughs> Can you feel the presence of the Lord? He's here. Father, release the fire. <sighs> right now, there it is. Take it. I'm Thomas Manton the Fourth. I love you. Praying for you. Receive this touch. Write me testimonies. Get busy. Let me pray you through some things. Write to me. If I don't see you, how can I know where you are? If I don't see what you are doing and talking about, if we don't connect like that, how can I know how I can pray for you, how I can advise you? So, get in touch. I love you. Talk to you on the next broadcast. This is great. Share this. Share this. And again, thank you for being my partner. You can see more on thomasmanton.com. Love you much. Thank you, Lord. Talk to you on the next broadcast. God bless you.